Hi folks, this is a quick video about a fuel tank solution I came up with for my home lawn equipment and home generators. Being that my neighborhood does not have natural gas available, I needed something that was a bit of a longer term fuel solution and came up with this. It was completed after a few weekends of on and off, figure it out as you go, sporadic work. It's based on a 30 gallon fuel tank that I found on Amazon, and I've equipped it with an electric pump and a long enough hose to easily reach most anything I would need to gas up. It's on four wheels, but can be tilted back and transported like a hand truck over more uneven terrain. There are numerous sellers that all seem to be offering what appears to be pretty much the same base product, and frankly, I should have paid more attention to the various reviews, as this thing had numerous problems and shortcomings. It was missing important washers, had some really flimsy plastic parts, one of the wheel locks didn't work, and I really didn't trust the seals and the function of a hand crank pump. It also didn't have any filtration before the pump, and the fuel level gauge was completely non-functional. The issues were bad enough that I decided to return it and go with a completely different fuel tank that I'll show in a moment that has a built-in electronic rechargeable battery-powered pump. But as things shook out, I suppose due to its large bulky size and the various oddities with Amazon, I ended up with a full refund being told to keep the defective tank. So I figured rather than trash it, I'd put the refunded money into making something functional and useful, so off we went. First off, the fuel tank cap they provided was a horrible thin plastic, and I needed something more substantial. I 3D printed a collar adapter that would thread over the non-standard Chinese threads, and on the other side allowed me to thread in a proper vented fuel cap. For the print, I used PETG plastic filament that's known to be quite resistant to gasoline. I also wanted to equip it with an electric pump, so I needed a self-priming pump that would also draw up fuel from a distance. The tube it attaches to extends down to the bottom of the fuel tank and is much wider than a normal fuel line, so that's several feet that an electric pump would need to be able to draw up fuel from. And since the threads that the included hand crank pump would attach to were, again, very non-standard, a conventional pump designed for a similar purpose wouldn't work. So I got a rubber cork and attached a hose adapter to it and sealed that inside the suction tube on the tank. A 3D printed cap goes over the threads and securely holds everything in place. Luckily, this fuel pump I found is designed to be installed further from a tank, and thankfully, upon testing, it did have sufficient suction to pull up the fuel from the very bottom, even accounting for the wider tube. And even better, it has an internal check valve to keep the fuel in the tube from having to be drawn up from scratch every single time. And even better yet, this pump has a built-in fuel filter to help clean up any trash that might be picked up from the tank. Rubber fuel line connects everything together, but I needed a way to power it. I could have used a 12 volt lead acid battery, but I really didn't want to deal with the hassles of charging it, especially when the tank would be living outdoors in an enclosed shed that doesn't have power. So running it on a portable drill battery seemed to be a good compromise. However, the drill battery is 18 volts and the pump is 12 volts, so I needed a voltage converter. And since I don't like being blown up, I needed a way to seal all this up such that any stray gas vapors would be unlikely to find an ignition source. So this ruled out a conventional switch to turn everything on and off that would risk sparking. My solution there was to incorporate an air switch as the power function. These are used on hot tubs and garbage disposals and such to allow power to be toggled in areas where it's unsafe to locate a conventional switch. So the push button is really just an air plunger that triggers a switch on the other end of the air tube located inside this airtight box I got from Harbor Freight. And inside the box, we have a power conversion board, the drill battery mount, a fuse, and the remote controlled switch. Another option here would have been a wireless switch with a remote control, but again, since this thing will be living in a shed, I didn't want a small handheld remote to get lost or covered in a layer of grime. So all the electronics are sealed in the box with gasket sealer on the places where things protrude through, and the box itself is held onto the tank with magnets. If I need to charge the battery, it's easy enough to swap it out since I have several of these for my other power tools. Just make sure it's powered down or simply disconnect the box and move it to a safe location. Next, we needed to work out the fuel nozzle. This was made with a simple length of PVC over the fuel line, ending in a brass ball valve, and from the valve to a stainless steel tube that will act as the nozzle. This allows me to easily turn off the flow of fuel, and if needed, insert it into a vehicle fuel tank inlet. And we also needed to deal with the grounding clamp, which formally attached to that hand crank pump. I moved the connection here, since this was one of the few points with positive contact to the metal tank body. Now over here, the fuel indicator mechanism didn't work right. First off, the shaft on it was too long, such that anything other than a completely empty tank would make the indicator impact the top of the gauge. So that had to be trimmed down, and I added a cap onto it to make it easier to see. 
Next, after testing it, the float bulb was either filled with fuel and sank, or didn't have enough buoyancy to raise the mechanism. I drilled a hole in it to drain any fuel that may have accumulated in there and then sealed it with JB Weld, and since it still didn't float, purchased and attached another float to it with some stainless steel wire, which finally allowed it to function correctly. I also had to repair the locking mechanism on the front caster wheels. As I said, there were numerous issues with this tank as I received it, but most importantly, it was liquid tight. But in the end, I think I have something kind of cool that should be safe and meets my needs of storing enough fuel for my generators to run for an extended time, in addition to fueling up lawn equipment. And if the fuel ages longer than the fuel preservative is good for, I'll just pump it into one of my vehicles and then refill it with fresh gas. Would I recommend doing this? No, not really. As I said, this product on Amazon is really what I should have gone with in the first place. The capacity isn't as large, but it's designed for this type of purpose and includes a neat rechargeable electric pump. Just based on the reviews, it would probably only need the fuel line replaced in order to be dependable. But in any case, I thought perhaps my project here might inspire people in similar situations to come up with a solution for their needs. I've included the links to the STL files if you want to print the collars out and to the various parts I used. Let me know if you have any comments or if you have any questions or see any concerns. And have a great day.